In this lesson, we're going to talk about graphing absolute value functions. Absolute value functions. Um, before we actually graph absolute value functions, I want to look at uh, a repeat of graphing just a generic old uh, linear function, f of x equals x. All right. Now, I'm going to graph this using the slope and the y-intercept. I'm going to do it in green here. Um, f of x equals x is the function that's going to be the same as y equals x, right? It has a, a y-intercept at 0 and a slope of 1. So if I go up 1 into the right one, I'll have a point that's on my line. And so I'm going to draw this line here. All right, it's not perfect, but hey, we have a line up there, right? Now, when I look at f of x equals absolute value of x, right, that means take those x values, basically, and take the absolute value of them, right? And remember, absolute value is the distance from zero. So whenever I input an x value, I'm going to almost get the same thing out, right? For instance, if I plug in 1, I'm going to get 1, right? Because if absolute value of 1 is 1. If I plug in 2 for x, then I'm going to get 2 because the absolute value of x equals 2. If I plug in 3 for x here, well, absolute value of 3 is 3. So I'm going to get this thing right here, right? This right-hand side is going to be the same. What about when I plug in 0, right? If I plug in 0 for x, well, the absolute value is 0 is 0. So I get 0. So I'm good. This is still part of my absolute value of x function. But the difference comes when I have negative values of x. For instance, let's plug in negative 1 for x. This is where x equals negative 1. If I take the absolute value of negative 1, then I'm going to get positive 1. So I actually get this point right here. If I take the absolute value of negative 2, well, absolute value of negative 2 is a positive 2. So I get this value here, where before it was actually negative 2. And when it was x was negative 1, it was actually negative 1 as the y value for this function here. All right. What is happening here is that since we're taking the absolute value of all these x values, it's actually kind of flipping this across my axis. And so I'm going to get a line that looks something like this on my left hand side. And so this is the, the, the general shape of an absolute value. It's going to be this highlighted portion here. It's actually a V, all right? So the graph of all absolute value functions, they are V-shaped. So it's going to make it a little bit difficult to graph because we have to always know where that V occurs. And if we look at this example here, to determine where the V occurs, all we have to do is look inside the absolute value. Whatever expression is in there, it occurs where this thing is 0. Notice if x is 0, I get this V right here. And so I'm going to use this knowledge to come up with some steps to help us write these absolute value or graph these absolute value equations. Let's look here. Graphing absolute value functions. It says, determine the values that make your expression in absolute value equal to zero. All right? So I'm not just going to always have just an x in there. I might have a 2x plus 3 or a 5x minus 4 or a 3x minus 9. That inside the absolute value. Figure out what value of x makes that equal to zero. Once we figure that out, then we're going to choose points on both sides of that point, meaning choose a number that's less than that number and choose a number that's greater than that number and make a table of values so that we can graph by plotting points. All right. And once we get the table of values, we're actually going to plot those points. Let's look at an example. Our first example here, it says to graph and state the domain and range. Our function is f of x equals negative absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1. Okay. Well, the first step is to look inside my absolute value. I have the expression x minus 2 in there. All right. I want to know what value of x makes this part right here equal to 0. All right. If you can't just look at it and tell, just set it equal to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. All right. 
And well, in order for us to solve for x, we have to add 2 to both sides. So we get that x equals 2. So this is where the v occurs. Okay. Once we know that, we're going to create a table of values. I'm going to have my x coordinates and then my y coordinates. All right. I'm going to put 2 in the middle of my table because if I have a v, right? Well, I can choose a point on the left side, which is a point that's going to be less than two, right? So two is right here. Let's pick a number less than two, like one. And then on the other side of my V, I'm going to pick a, a number that's bigger than one, a number like three. And the rest is plug in your X coordinates into your absolute value function, and it'll give you the Y coordinate. Let's do that. So when I plug in 1, I get negative absolute value of 1 minus 1, sorry, 1 minus 2 plus 1. Now this can get really complicated, right? The out, Inside the absolute value, this part is negative 1. This part right here is negative 1. But when I take the absolute value, I get positive 1, but there's a negative on the outside. So this is going to be negative 1 plus 1, which equals 0. Okay? Let's plug in 2. Get negative absolute value of 2 minus 2 plus 1. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0, and 0, when I take the absolute value, is still 0. And if I add 0 to 1, I still get 1. Okay? And so I get another ordered pair. Last but not least, let's plug in 3 for x. I get negative absolute value of 3 minus 2 plus 1. Sorry about that. Well, absolute value of 3 minus 2 is 1, but I got a negative on the outside. So that would be negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. So what we have here is three ordered pairs. I get the ordered pair 1, 0. I get the ordered pair 2, 1. And I get the ordered pair 3, 0. And so I'm going to plot those points, and hopefully I'll see a V. All right, let's start with the point 1, 0. All right, let's go to the right one. Stop at 0. Don't go up or down. I have a point. The point 2, 1. Go to the right 2 and up 1. I have a point. And I have the point 3, 0 from the origin. Go to the right 3. Don't go up or down. And then we can draw our V. And this time it is upside down, which is fine. Now, I don't want to stop here. I want to be able to find my domain and my range of this absolute value function. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about those definitions that we thought about before. Let's first talk about domain. Domain is a set of all x values where our graph is, our function is defined. Okay. Now, I like to look at this according to my x-axis, okay? I want to know what values on this x-axis is my function defined for, okay? It's easy to see these, these right here, right? Because I have an x-coordinate at these points here. But I actually have x values all, in all of these points here that are between them. And also, I have points for every single x-coordinate in this graph here. For instance, when x is negative 1, I have that point on my graph right there. When x is negative 3, I have this point on my graph right here. These arrows mean that my graph are going to continue forever and ever. And so, when x equals 9, I have this point on my graph right here. When x equals negative 8, I have this point on my graph right here. There is not a single point where my x values, uh, where my function is not defined, all right? And that means my domain is all real numbers, which we write as negative infinity to positive infinity. Note, we were going from left to right, from left to right. Now let's talk about our range. When we talk about our range, we're going up and down, or we're going from lowest to highest. Okay, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. My function is defined. I have a piece of my function for all of these y values from here on down to negative infinity. 
all right? But if you look up here at like four, three, four, five, there's not a part of my graph for these y values, right? For instance, when y equals negative three, I get this point right here. And when y equals negative three, I also get this point right here. When y equals negative seven, I have this point on my line on my graph. And y equals negative seven, I get this point right here. But when I get to two, I can't go right and left to find a part on my graph or any of those values up there. Actually, the largest value is actually when x equals one. So when I write my range, it's actually going to be starting from lowest to highest. The lowest would be negative infinity up until positive one. Since positive one is on my graph here, then I'm going to include it, right? It's a point on my graph here. So I'm going to include one in my range. All right. So that's the domain and range. So we've graphed the absolute value function and we found the domain and the range. Okay. And that's it for this video.